Hey fam, hi, 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 good evening, good evening to each and every one of you family. I hope this screen is the way it's supposed to be, but nonetheless, to God be the glory, it is your sister in Christ again, Taban <laughs> Sakaichu of God's Hara Mission. Welcome to tonight's teaching. Let me just check the clock. Yep, mm -hmm. it is definitely evening. But you know how we roll, as and when the spirit leads, and then I come out here and do what I gotta do and that's it so to god be the glory thank you jesus for this day um uh, this won't be a very lengthy um it won't be a lengthy word from the lord actually um it's pretty much straightforward but i guess it will serve as confirmation you know for perhaps the sons and daughters that are looking for that you know you you will know <laughs> when the lord is speaking to you through this word so first i'm going to jump into a quick prayer and then we're going to go straight into the word if you can join me, please, and uh, stand in agreement by faith on the other side, whether you're going to be tuning in live or at a later stage, we're doing this together. Okay, cool. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this day. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, speak through me. Um, clear my mind. Um, I put on the mind of Christ. May I not speak from my own understanding, but... Um, speak only that which is from above by your spirit. So I thank you for my brothers and sisters from across the globe. Minister to their hearts, Lord, and mine as well as you are revealing your heart to us at this very moment. Bleed the blood of Jesus over this broadcast. Thank you for, for your uh, consuming fire, Lord. Um, and just thank you for just who you are and for loving us unconditionally. Um, thank you, Lord, for being the God of all comfort. Thank you for your spirit of wisdom. Thank you for your revelatory knowledge. Thank you, Lord, for your great insight and understanding. Just thank you for your mercy and compassion and for your love. And I pray all of this in the mighty and matchless name of Christ Jesus, the Lord and all, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen and amen. All right, so fam, let me get to it. Our, I guess our foundation scripture, right, for this teaching is Isaiah 6022. Okay, so I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna unpack what the Lord is saying. Um, I know I don't come on as often. I've, uh, yeah, the Lord has pulled me away a little bit more and for a little bit longer because him and I are handling up on what we need to handle up. It's not to say that um, I'm, oh, God's heart is done or we're not going to be, you know, on God's heart mission. No, I will still come on as he releases me to, but he has me on, on top of things that I need to handle. And he has me resting and being with him and handling up <laughs> on a couple of things. So... Thank you, Jesus, for that. Um, so let's read up Isaiah 60.22. So I hope that you do have your Bible with you. Welcome to tonight's teaching. It's always a privilege to be able to fellowship, you know, with my brothers and sisters from across the globe. We are one in spirit, one baptism, one faith, one Lord, right? One God. Okay, one spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's jump on it. Isaiah 6022 says, The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. I'll read it again. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. So, the Lord had impressed upon my heart, if you are following the, if you are following us on God's heart, mission that in this season is going to be re rebuilding <laughs> the ruins right of the city of david he's going to be rebuilding so many aspects of our lives in real time and my job and yours is to keep up with our role in this rebuilding process in this re-establishment process right and uh, where the lord is going to be uh having us rooted in the land that he has given us right whatever it is you know that he has destined for you to to acquire to possess huh, by his spirit right um we are doing this with the spirit of the lord we are doing this in real time with the holy spirit i have seen it happening so many times a couple of times back to back non-stop day in and day out where the lord is literally saying one thing and i gotta act on it right there and then Hence, you know, the Bible always tells us that we ought to remain in the word, prayerful, in the secret closet. So 
we are able to recognize his voice but to also respond as and when you know you have that unction to respond and to take the 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 the, the right steps you know as the spirit leads keeping up with the spirit means spending time in his presence in the presence of the lord fellowshipping with the holy spirit that's how you're gonna keep up with what the holy spirit is doing and what god is doing in your life revealing his will for your life by his spirit staying in fellowship with the holy spirit is non-negotiable that that's the number one stop shop <laughs> that's the, the place you should be more than anything so what the lord impressed in my heart is we have take this back to the lord and just find out if you are in this season or is this your era but for many of his sons and daughters whom the lord has confirmed to say that i'm going to restore you i'm going to re-establish you i'm going to rebuild you the latter house shall be greater than the former that time that time is here and god is moving quickly he's moving so fast i can hardly ever keep up i don't know if you're experiencing this but half the time i'm like lord slow down what is it that you need me to do again right if you're experiencing that it's by his spirit that the god of glory is doing what he said he's going to do and that this time is now this time is now so keeping up with the holy spirit is the first most paramount important thing why is it also so important that we keep up with the holy spirit is because he will guide us in the way that we should go right and he will lead us you know um show us the way pretty much in every single thing the holy spirit will show you which way you should go um which decisions you should be taking he will reveal you know hidden things so that you are able to make decisions not based on your flesh but that are in alignment with the will of the father for that particular situation that particular uh, uh, circumstance whatever the situation may be whatever that is you want to hear first from the lord and do what the lord says not what your mind or free will tells you to do that's why it's important otherwise whatever you're trying to rebuild whatever you are trying to partake in with the lord is not going to work but you'll be a hindrance yourself because you're not allowing the spirit of the lord to lead you and you're not operating from um a heart of obedience which does nothing for you right so <laughs> let's move on to the next thing then the god of glory actually reminded me when i was reading through uh, the book of chronicles um he reminded me about the conversation where david was extorting um his son you know solomon to build the temple we know that he was having a conversation with the lord to say that but lord you've been rolling with in the tent for a while you know with my forefathers isn't it time that you know your your presence uh be 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 built a temple for like to be hosted there you know and then the lord was having a back and forth with him to say that listen you've shed blood i'm not interested in you building um my temple but i'll have your son king solomon do that god appoints people to do certain things as much as king david was a man after god's heart and he served as a king having been anointed by prophet samuel per instruction of the lord he won so many battles to the glory of god starting off with goliath we know we know we pretty much we have an idea you know for most of us we know the story of king david you know in as much as it was the desire was in him to build the temple for the lord the very same lord said not we're not happening i'll have your son do that for me so he didn't appoint king david to build the temple and those are for the reasons that god has those, those are god's reasons right because the bible well the bible does say that it's because he said he has um he has blood in his hands you know he's shed many blood but we don't know beyond that what else is there right and then he turned the lord then told him that i'll have your son king solomon build my temple so in every assignment or whatever that project is 
you can go back to the lord and verify if he's actually appointed you for that if you are not sure but if you do know that he's he's ushered you into that space into that territory to take up that position to pick up that project to attend to that assignment uh to pick up that career whatever it is when you are definitely sure that it's from the lord know that it's by appointment okay god appoints and he fires too he's very good at firing people who are disobedient but he does appoint whom he chooses because he's a god who who has a choice he chooses his vessels you want to be on that side right um, i'm gonna just quickly go straight to it where he actually appoints where the lord speaks to king david and tells him who is going to build his temple the lord then said you know this is uh what one chronicles uh, chapter 28 verse 6 says he said to me Solomon your son is the one who will build my house and my courts for I have chosen him to be my son okay so in case you are feeling intimidated about the mammoth task or the position the Lord has assigned you or where he's leading you into new territories understand that he has chosen you as a son or daughter and because he's chosen you as a son or daughter to do to build with him that house you you decide to put what is in that house these assignments that the lord is giving us and you find that it's multiple assignments all at once but we will be able to manage because it will be by the lord's spirit that we'll be able to accomplish that Building in this temple was a ginormous task that king solomon was facing moreover the lord gave him the architectural plans straight from heaven so everything had to be done to the t so much so that the lord still instilled his spirit to um, one of the person who was responsible who was a skilled designer the lord put his spirit over that person to be able to get the design details exactly as the lord had wanted them so details is everything precision is everything and it, again it is by the lord's spirit right that whatever it is that you're going to be doing is going to be first successful and sustainable successful and sustainable the bible says the word of god in the book of proverbs says make your plans known unto the lord and he will make them successful make your plans made known unto the lord and he will make them successful the success will be determined by whether or not those plans are in alignment with his will so we have to check the motive you know the motives of our hearts why am i wanting this why am i desiring that so that our prayers are not hindered as the book of james says you know your prayers are not answered because the motives are not right we pray sometimes from a selfish point of view it's all about me 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 and what i wanna you know selfish desires and selfish pleasures etc where god is not about that he's, he's got bigger things you know it's, we have to kind of like ask the lord to show us what his vision and mission is you know about every single thing that we do so that we get we get over ourselves if i should put it that way and then we we get we grab a handle of what his mission is, what his vision is, what his agenda is about whatever it is he's assigning us or where he's sending us. What is in your heart, Lord? What is your will about this assignment? What is your will about this project? What is your will about me being in this particular position, whether it's work or business? What is your will in me establishing this? Why are you wanting us to do this, Lord? What is the, what, what is the, the bigger picture here? Because once you, I guess, once you get out of, the mindset of thinking that it's you know all about you and what's immediately around you and you get god's perspective by his spirit then how you approach that assignment changes the way you approach it the way you think about it the way you attend to it completely shifts and gets into alignment with the heart of the father then you operate again by the lord's spirit so we understand according to the word that solomon was appointed to be the one to build the temple and obviously the Lord gave supernatural instruction. He still does it today. When God gives you an assignment, he will give you the grand design. 
because King Solomon had the grand design. The Lord revealed it to King David as well. This is what I want. These are the dimensions. It's everywhere in the Bible. Very lengthy. You know, exactly what he wants, the cubes and all of that was there. So the same thing applies for that assignment, project or business idea or the career path that you're taking. The same thing applies. You can ask the Lord for those details. He revealed it to King Solomon. He revealed it to King David. He can reveal to you the intricate details that can only be revealed by his spirit because he'll give you an assignment but then you don't know the depth of it you'll just be kind of like managing it or establishing it the best way you know how but at this point or in this hour in this season in this era of rebuilding you want to get the divine strategies the design work from the master planner who is the lord who is the lord because details is everything details is everything because whatever he's assigning you to is going to serve as a ministry i don't care what kind of business it is so long as it doesn't service uh the three pillars of satan killing stealing and destroying and it's it's by the lord and he's the foundation of that or your career that you choose to pick or that assignment or project from the lord it will serve its purpose as a ministry god is going to use it as a vehicle to reach the nations that's why it's important. Something as small as designing a logo. I'm going to speak about business now. I don't know why the Lord is leading me there. <laughs> Something as simple as designing a logo. It's very important. Something that you could just take for granted as drafting a letter. As the Lord. As the Lord for the design of that logo. It, it gets that deep. And to, to point you to the right designer who he will influence by his spirit. To design exactly what he the lord has in mind for that logo it's really that detailed so every single thing we are not to take for granted the companies or the stakeholders or the business partners or the associates or the suppliers the vendors whoever it is that's going to be part of this whole building process they're very important and when you pick them you go to the lord and ask god who should be part of this team and who shouldn't because you want the, the, the same spirit of the Lord that's operating in you to be operating in them. So that they do, they operate from a spirit of excellence. There's only one spirit of excellence and that is the spirit of the Lord. The one that the book of Daniel speaks about. And you want that because every single facet of either that business or that project or that assignment or whatever it is matters. Because God is going to use it in which whether it's the way you would understand it or somebody else but everything in it actually matters but god has the design work he has the plan for that business idea that he has planted in your heart he has everything to the t already worked out we just need to spend more time seeking his face to get the master plan to get the design work to get the divine connections all of that by his spirit and then the second job after getting all of that is to be obedient. That's all we really need to do here. Be obedient. Be prepared to do the work. Be prepared to, pl to play your part to do what the Lord wants you to do as you are rebuilding with the Lord. Okay. And why is this important? It's because when we turn to Psalm 127, the word of God reminds us that when we turn to Psalm 127, sorry, ma'am, I'm almost there. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, I'm going to repeat that again, let it sink in for a minute. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. You're going to be able to sleep better at night when you know what God's strategies are for that business, for that um, assignment or project that he's entrusted you with. Trust and believe this comfort with revelation. Comfort comes 
by revelation or revelation brings comfort i don't know what's happening with my english but you catch what i'm saying once something's been revealed you are comforted because now you know what time it is so asking the lord direct questions what's the plan here lord what's your mission and vision for this i've received the assignment you've appointed me and chosen me for it and i know that i won't fail because you are behind it and i know that it's going to succeed because i've put my plans before you and I know that you will guide me in the way that I should go, which will line up with your will for this particular project. And you are building this. Because when you get instructions, supernatural instructions from the Lord, powered by his spirit of wisdom, the sustenance. He is the spirit of life anyway. He will breathe life into that. He will give it life. God won't give you something that won't sustain you. We know the wisdom that he gave King Solomon. Need I say more? King Solomon could have only been at the level that he was because he got ideas and instructions and advice and counsel and all of those things from the Lord. The spirit of the Lord was the one handling up on his business matters, leading him on those business transactions. He had a discerning heart. We have to pray for a discerning heart, for great insight, for immeasurable understanding is the prayers we need to be praying now for every single assignment, every single project that the Lord gives you. Detailed information is what we're going to require from the Lord. There's nothing wrong with asking God for information. He's the spirit of revelation. He reveals things to us, his heart, his will. He's the one sitting with the plans. I've got plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you life and a future and life in abundance. He's sitting with the plan of that particular assignment. The Lord is sitting with the entire plan, detailed plan, because he's a detailed God. He's a detailed God. He knows that assignment from the beginning he knows the end from the beginning so he knows the end of that assignment from the beginning yeah he knows the end from the beginning but you catch we catch what i'm saying but he knows better how it's supposed to roll how he's supposed to operate who needs to be there who shouldn't be there the entire plan is in the lord's hand and all you got to do is to pray and say god grant me access I need that plan. I need your spirit to reveal to me how I should move in this next step. Inquire of the Lord. Seek his counsel. How are we moving, Lord? Why are we doing this, Lord? What should I do when I met with this, Lord? Because building what the Lord has gifted you now, and you do it outside of his spirit, you're going to labor in vain. You're going to labor in vain. It's going to be all for nothing and still have sleepless nights while building it. When God has revealed something to you, there's a level of peace that comes with it as well. Because you, you are, you've kept up with the spirit and because you've allowed the spirit to lead you, right? I hope I'm making sense to somebody. No matter how big a task it is, it should never even intimidate you because you won't be the one bearing the weight of that task. You won't be the one carrying that. God is the one that's going to watch over it. He's the one that has helped you establish it, and then he will sustain it. He will sustain it. As much as he sustained the Israelites for 40 years, day in and day out, he will sustain that. He's got no problem sustaining things. But we need to give the control back to the Lord and allow the Lord to do only that which he can do. And then another verse that the Lord brought to my heart was it's Psalms as well yes it's in the book of Psalms Psalm 90 17 says this is King David now let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us yes establish the work of our hands you want the favor of the Lord be upon you in this season as you are building that house with him for he is the one that's going to establish the works of your hands, making your plans successful. 
let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Deuteronomy 28, 12, one of my favorite passages of scripture says, the Lord will open to you his good treasury. Oh, there's a lot in that department. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. God is capacitating his sons and daughters in Christ to be able to handle the wealth of the wicked that's been transferred right now in real time. But your systems have to be in place. Your systems have to be in place. And the instructions are going to, the ones that are going to work are the ones straight from above. Everything, no matter how small it may look, don't let nothing um, just fly past you without you grabbing it and submitting it unto the, unto the Lord. Make every single thing known unto the Lord. Call upon the Lord. He will give you the answers. He will reveal things. While you are sleeping, God will be dropping down so many things in your spirit. So many instructions. At night, don't be lazy to wake up and jot down that dream or that vision or that instruction. Whatever it is, you write it down. I don't know. Record it on your phone. Whatever works for you. So that tomorrow morning you can sit and go back to the Lord and be like, Ah, Lord, you said this while I was sleeping. How are we doing this? Because there's so many avenues that the Lord will be using to communicate those strategies to you and me in this season. It's very important that we do that. Give it back to the Lord and then move from a place of obedience. He is just in the business of establishing his children in the season. These are exciting times to be alive. But only if you are in the will of the Father, then will you enjoy the benefits right forgetting not his benefits as, as um king david says you enjoy the benefits of worshiping the lord and and, and uh, more than anything obeying the lord as well very important god is always speaking he's always talking we need to make ourselves available he is your ceo he is your md first first he'll give you the most amazing strategies things that you just think to yourself where did that even come from not only will he give you a supernatural strategy he will make it possible because he'll be establishing that through you and he will bless it you got nothing to lose and absolutely nothing to fear because we are governed by faith and not by fear so once you've gotten confirmation from the lord that he wants you to establish a particular something in something specific the second step we be like okay lord discerning heart grant me your wisdom i need that understanding obviously you would have checked that you are appointed right to handle up on that because you got to be the chosen instrument for that right and then from there you start asking for instructions so what is the first thing lord what's on your agenda what's the plan how are we doing this and you act and you act faith without works is dead. Dead. So nothing is going to happen unless you act. But you want to build this house, the latter house, with the Lord. In order for it to be greater than the former. You want the Lord in there. He's going to watch over it. He's going to sustain that house. He's going to establish it with you, obviously. And then he's going to use it for his glory. For his glory. So it's never about us at the end of the day. It's about the will of the Father for that particular mission. It's never about us. Here's the bottom line. You and I are definitely going to die. But what we do between now and being joined back with the Father, that's what we are about. We are just here about the business of the Father. So wherever he throws you, go there. 
and get his mission done. You know, Jesus, I used to just marvel when I read the Bible. Each time he'll just be reminding people very quickly that I am about the business of the Father. It's not about you, nothing personal. I'm just here doing what I gotta do and I'm handling up and you would never allow for anybody to try and distract that, you know, or uh, speak him out of it or try and derail what he was on about. He was just going to finish what he has started. So it's the kind of commitment we need to have, especially sons and daughters of Christ Jesus in this season. That's the Lord to position you. You wanna be positioned to be able to receive Whatever it is that's going to serve as a hindrance, you pray to the Lord and you have him help you handle up on that. But, but then he's going to help you get systems in place because there's going to be so many things happening all at the same time and you can't misstep. There should not be room for error. Details. When God says to the left, you can't be negotiating. Once you hear the voice, there won't be enough room for you to be like, Lord, did you just... You gotta just have to act. That's how some of, I've had to make decisions before I could even process the thought. Like I, I say, making decisions on the run. There was no room for nothing. Literally a person is on the other phone saying, what is it going to be? That's the kind of pressure. And at that time while they're talking, I'm like, Lord, what's going on? What are they saying? Talk to me, talk to me, reveal, say this, come on. I wanna hear, hear, well, how do I respond? How do I... By the time they say, what's your response? I'm busy having a conversation with the Lord on the side. <laughs> Like, Lord, what just happened? How do I move? Because some things are going to need for you to answer while you are there. And you can't just be operating from the flesh. And you can't just be thumb sucking and guessing and taking chances. Because whatever you say yes to or no to will shape how that thing moves thereafter. So when you are led by the Spirit, you don't miss that. Because God will never lead you astray. That's why staying in His presence. You know, I always say prepare yourself rather in the mornings. I don't know when you have time with the Lord, but hand over the day to the Lord ahead of time and be like, Lord, help me move as your spirit leads. Please help me be obedient. Help me to discern, sharpen my discernment. So when you say go, then I know. When you say sit, then I know. For everything, you, you literally have to hand over your day to the Lord. Submit everything to the Lord. So you have a plan, sure, because we pretty much kind of like have an idea how far our day goes, but still within that day, God has got stuff already planned for that day. It is the day that the Lord has made. And in that making, he has his detailed plans and his agenda, his will on that day. He's created the day anew. And you wake up in the morning. The day belongs to the Lord because he's the one who created the day. We just get the privilege of enjoying the day. But within that day, he knows exactly what is to transpire. And our job is to be like, Lord, this is the day you've made. I'm going to be just joyous, right, in it, and be glad, right, and be obedient, and do what you have predestined for me to do in this day. Literally, it's a day-to-day -day move like that, when you literally have to dedicate each and every day to the Lord. And then if there's specific prayers, you make them known unto the Lord, as the word says. Make your petitions and prayers known unto the Lord with thanksgiving, of course, and supplication. Make your request known unto the Lord. Lord, this is what my heart desires, but what do you say? Nothing wrong with that, because he already knows. God, I don't understand this, but help me understand. And then sometimes he'll tell you, now nah, you might, you don't get it now. I'll let you know later. I need you to be obedient now. You've heard that I've said, do it. You don't understand it. Just do it. <laughs> later on, I'll reveal it to you. So, yeah. So, I just want to encourage someone just to say that don't be afraid, because God has gone ahead of you. He is God Emmanuel. He is with you. He'll operate from inside of you. He'll be around you. He'll go ahead of you. He'll be your rear guard. There's nothing to fear. And the best way to go about this is to make sure that you are so rooted, rooted in his word. Because he speaks through his word. And you pray to the Lord. And you ask him. Don't even, even if you feel like you, you think you are silly or whatever. No. I ask the Lord, what are we wearing today? I don't want to wear that. And there are moments when I'm like, no, Lord, I'm not quickly putting on makeup, nothing. No, I'm going like this to the mall. <laughs> and I've done that a couple of times when I disobeyed the Lord and I've, I've felt that. Because the Lord was like, ah, 
How did that business proposal go at the mall? Because you were not looking the part, ma'am. Yeah, that's what happens when you're disobedient. So I learned my lesson. When he says, put on some foundation, look a little pretty, I do it. Because I know, I know I'll have something to say when I come out from wherever I'll be coming from. Because we, sometimes you want to be well put together and then there are times, well, you just do you, you know. But again, that that is when you ask of the Lord. I ask the Lord everything. He's my father, right? He knows best. He already knows how the day should flow. I just want to make sure that I've got makeup at the right time and I'm at the right place, speaking to the right people about whatever it is that God wants me to do. That's all. Because there are times when you put on makeup, but you meet nobody in terms of business prospects or whatever it is that the Lord wants to do at that point. I'm just making this analogy, especially as ladies. You know? Impressions. And I'm not talking about romantic relationships, and I'm just speaking about just making an impression. Very important. At the right time. Not every day. At the right time. For God's purposes. Alright, so I hope that you have been blessed by that fam. So just meditate on those verses that I uh, shared with you, but allow for the Lord to expand a bit more. I'll only say the part that He reveals, and then the rest is for you to to take up with the Lord and find out which part is for you, which is not, and he can download the rest to you. So thank you so much for being a part of the teaching. And I just wanted to thank each and every single one of you for your support in terms of uh, voting, um, just casting your votes. Um, as I have been nominated, I wanted the nominees for um, the Texas Gospel Music Excellence Awards. Hi, uncle, hello. Thanks, my uncle. Uh, uncle, I hope you have been voting, hey? Just just give me a thumbs up that you've been voting every five minutes. Just saying. Yeah, so I'm the niece, so I can just make those demands, hey? Privilege. Um, so thank you so much for each and everybody that has been voting. I appreciate your love and support. Um, I just want to appeal to you to keep those words coming. Please do share my post. I think I've posted it on God's heart as well as my my one as well. Taban Sakaiju. Okay, uncle. Cool. He's been voting. Thanks, my love. I appreciate your love and support. Thank you very much. Um, so please continue to vote as the closing date is on the 15th of October and you can vote as many times as you like. All the details are on those posts. I think it's the last post that I made. You can just follow the website and then just go to the relevant category, um, which is the um, International uh, Gospel Announcer of the Year. So I'm under that category. And, and for, for some of us who are thinking a gospel announcer was that, it just means a presenter. Yeah, that's I learned that. That that's the the term they use in the states to say presenter. They say announcer. So please just share that with your friends and family members. Um, it's literally just for the glory of God. That's what I believe. It really has nothing to do with me. I'm not really. I'm actually very shy. As my uncle, hey, I'm I'm actually very very shy. I'm very shy. Even to do that pose, I had to gather so much strength and be like, Holy Spirit, help me. You know, um, because I'm not, I was just going to keep quiet and just not know what to do. So my boss was like, what are you doing? You need to upload and tell your brothers and sisters so that they can support you here. This is for the glory of God. Why are you just quiet? So here I am. So I just want to thank you again for the support. I appreciate it. Just say the, share the post. Let everybody in on it. And um, may the God of glory bless you as you do so. So the rest will leave to God. But we'll do a part and then the rest, God will just take it from there. So thank you so much, everybody, for that. And Malome, I'm hoping I'm going to see you very, very soon by the grace of God. And um, yeah, to each and everybody that has been a part of God's Heart and Mission, um, we really do appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support. We appreciate just you being part of this community and um, being a part of that which God is doing. And in your personal lives as well just keep going don't give up yes it's hard sometimes it's not really easy this walk is a narrow path but once you've said yes to jesus you have nothing to lose and everything to gain It's the best decision um, that you could have ever made so remind yourself of um the price you know that awaits you after it's all said and done because here's the thing on earth we are passing by but eternity is exactly that is forever and forever more we will be in the presence of the Lord. I feel like that's something to look forward to, right? Um, and what we are here for is just to do His will. So whatever He's entrusted you, whatever He's asked of you, you know, the least we can do, God died for us, you know, Christ Jesus died for us on the cross. The least we can do is to say, yes, Lord, send me, 
and here to do your will which is the bare minimum for that which he has done for us and continues to do for us by his spirit because he didn't leave us as orphans we have him living inside of us to help us navigate this thing called life so don't be afraid because god is right here he's alive and well seated on his throne going nowhere and one day we will be joined with the father for all eternity and chilling there and just enjoying ourselves so that is something to look forward to i mean i don't know what else is there really you know so this thing called life i appreciate it you know but um i'm not gonna lie and say that i'm looking forward to the day when i'm just looking like this you know in the eyes of the father like lord you are here i'm here you know what i mean um yeah that's that's i know it sounds weird but i don't know guys i'm not dying now i'm here <laughs> yeah i feel like i'm gonna be here for a very long time but <laughs> it's just that conversation that i have with the lord it's there's nothing beyond that really and um again for me i feel like it's another gift you know or over and above is another privilege and an honor to just be in the presence of the lord like that that we still have to look forward to you know eternal life in the presence of the father i can't even begin to process that in my brain but um i'm all for that you know so just continue waking up every day knowing that everything that you do is to the glory of the father and he's with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you will strengthen you he will um hold you by his righteous right hand he will lead you he'll protect you he'll cover you he will literally um carry you through it all so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain in christ jesus so be blessed yours and your families um fam thank you so much again for the love and support and continue to vote and uh, may the god of glory richly bless you as you do so love and support i'll pop in as and when the spirit leads but go after that which the god of glory has um download it in your spirit and don't be afraid it's already done predestined works already done we just have to line ourselves up and we run with it so thank you so much very good night to you i think all morning malumene i'm not sure but yeah <laughs> catch you on the flip side thank you family stay blessed thank you